Hello everyone. Now we are going to code the algorithm presented in the previous videos that uh, given a database builds automatically a decision tree for classification. So please make sure you understand very well uh, how trees are usually coded in computer science. I mean, to understand this code, you need to know the basics on data structures, like uh, trees, for example, because for the purpose of the tutorial, the most important thing is to understand the decision tree construction algorithm and not to understand how trees are implemented in Python, right? So please make sure you, you, you understand that. If you don't understand trees, uh, you should follow another tutorial first where you know how to do the recursive uh, implementation of, of that data structure. So in this case, given that the trees implementation is not the core of this tutorial, we are going to use one library mainly for uh, adding the nodes and printing the tree that is uh, very known in Python and it's called the tree leaf. So make sure you have that library installed. So we are going to use the functions tree and node um, we are going to use NumPy, of course, and Pandas. Um, we're going to use the log and the random function. I'm gonna see later. Okay, so. Let's load the data. I'm gonna use actually the same data I used for the ex for the example in the previous video. It is called data about the weekend plans, right? This variable will store the name of the column that has the, the class name, right? Uh, we not necessarily are going to assume that the class name or the class variable is the last column. So we better uh, s save the name straight so we can index by the name later in the code. Uh, so in my case, I have the data in this path. You can do anything you want here to load your data. And um, okay, so we are going to use pandas dot read CSV. I have the data separated by comma, and the header is in the row zero. So I'm going to use this function from pandas. It's just for the display format. I'm going to get rid of the index column. Let's print it. Okay, so this is the table. You can see it's the same table we used for the, for the example on the previous video. Now let's implement some necessary helper functions. Of course, will be the entropy function and the and the information gain functions. So. Uh, the entropy is going to receive any vector x and um, so we need to obtain the values the different values that the vector can take I mean the variable 
For this, we use the NumPy unique function. For example, if the variable has three different values, then um, NumPy.unique is going to go over all the rows and capture just the different values and will return these th three different values. So I'm going to save the proportions in this uh, list. And um, so we are going over the elements in the different values. And we are going to, we are going to append to the proportions the sum Soon you want to understand what I'm doing here. It's, it's just very simple. Basically, I'm creating here the, the proportions using the formula sum of minus p log p, right? So we are creating here the proportions p, and basically they are capturing the amount of times we have each of the values of the variables. So this is why I'm appending here all the sum or the number of cases where the variable x takes the value of the element okay if for example we have 10 rows and then uh, there are two different elements yes or no this will loop over yes and no in case of yes we'll count the amount of times the variable x is equal to yes and then append it to the proportions so Later, we're going to need to divide by the sum to create the, the weights. So finally, we we'll just return um, the sum of minus p times the log of p. This is log 2, right? Um, for p in proportions. Okay, so let's try this. Let's let's see if the entropy of data um, class column. There we go. Okay, seems to be working now. Let's define the function for the information gain. So this is going to receive a variable and the labels, right? The, the last column necessary for the information gain of the variable var. So let's accum accumulate the sum. Again, we're gonna need all the values of, of the variable. We're going to need also the number of rows, which is uh, it's going to be the size of the variable. OK, so let's calculate here the, the reduction of, the, I mean, the conditional entropy, right, of each of the values. So we are going to loop over the labels so here basically what we need to do is to go over each of the values that the variable can take and then for each value we need to rescue the rows where the variable take that value but rescue the rows of the class column so this is why i am looping over the light labels column so here we are going to do this only in the cases where the variable is equal to the value v okay so we choose one value for for a specific variable and we rescue all the rows in the labels column where the variable take that value and now we need to accumulate this 
as a conditional entropy. So we calculate the entropy of this uh, selection and we need to multiply it by the weight, remember? And the weight is exactly the size of this vector, L, divided by the number of rows. So finally, we return the entropy of the labels minus the conditional, the expected conditional entropy that is being accumulated here. We're just following the, exactly the same formula we have done in the previous uh, videos. So let's try this. Or let's calculate the information gain of um, the variable And there we go. Now we need some functions to help with the stopping criterion. Recall that one stopping criterion is when all the rows have the same value of the class. That could be implemented in just one line of code. We don't have to create a function for that. But also we need the other criterion when um, all the data rows are the same. So let's call it same data. Let me here uh, and this is going to receive a data table any data table right right because recall we are going to use this in any moment of the tree construction and uh, we're going to rescue for all the variables in our data set so it's going to be a list uh, of all the items in the data dot columns, if the item is not the class name. Okay. After this, uh, we make sure that if there are not variables, we just need to return true. It means that we have to stop the construction, right? Because we run out of, of variables. And now we need to count, count the number of cases in where the rows are the same for every variable. So let's do this. Um, so if the size, so I'm gonna grab all the unique values for the specific variable. And when all the rows are the same in every variable, it means that for one specific variable, all the rows are equal. It means that if we create a unique vector, it's going to have just one element. So if this size is equal to one, it means that for the case of the, of the variable, now we need to check if this condition happened for every variable. So if the counter is equal to So here we're checking that for every variable, we had that all the unique vector has just one element. So in this case, we're, we're going to return true. Finally, we just need to return false if we didn't fall in any of the previous condition. Okay, so let's try this. Um, here we know that, for example, rows three and four are the same in these variables. If we discard whether, we should get a true from this function. Okay, so data test is going to be data and we are going to index um, for rows three and four and for columns for seeing data that comes if C if it's not weather. Let me just 
just check. Okay, so here we have one slice of data that should return um, positive. Okay, if the if the class were the last column, so just for test purposes, um, we should print same data. Um, data test and uh, in this case the class name is leave parents true right and now if I print same data of data this should you know that this should be false the original data and the original class name we know that all the rows are not the same okay seems to be working 